Victoria was presented with the opportunity of a lifetime, a chance to be coached by eight times world champion Frederick Manier at a newly established elite school of cycling. He was not uh, in French, you say, fulgurant uh, ascension. No, she, she really step by step by step. After the first two weeks in Switzerland, I honestly thought I was going to die, I was going to drop dead. I was so tired. I just thought, how do people do this? I have no idea how to do this. And I was like, oh gosh, I'm letting them down. They've got me wrong. I haven't got it. I really haven't got it. I'm wasting their time. I'm wasting their money. And I was having a bad time with Fred and that had really knocked my confidence a bit because he was, you know, he was getting a bit angry with me and I'm really someone who aims to please. She probably said I'm pretty hard, hard person because I, I, I want the best. I'm extremely demanding and my character is probably not an easy one. I'm not a flat person. It got to a stage where I was really depressed. Dave Brailsford decided to send Steve Peters out because they were quite concerned. He was the guy who had the expertise, who could, you know, see reason from emotion. It was a very special day. I mean, I cried a lot. She basically cried for two hours. I listened in between the tears and then um, we got some kind of communication. And I asked her a few questions that were quite leading. I feel like he had me at my character absolutely nailed within seconds. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this man can read minds. Vicky had no self-confidence. She had no way of controlling impulsive thinking. She had no way of containing emotion. She didn't know how to deal with emotion. Um, she couldn't communicate well with people. She wasn't assertive. The list went on and on. Steve kind of started the ball rolling and saying, well, you know, you can change the way you feel um, if you're willing to put the work in, just like all the other training you do. You can, you can change, you know, if you're committed to it. And this was a revelation. Against the wishes of her coach in Switzerland, Victoria returned to Manchester to train with the British team. It was 2004, and she had just weeks to prepare for Athens, her first Olympics. I just wasn't ready for it. The Olympic Games was, it's just massive. And I felt like I was still in primary school stages of learning what it's about. She was caught napping there, Pendleton. And I was absolutely devastated because I felt I had really let myself and everybody around me down. Not to mention letting Frederick Manier down. As a coach, I was very low and, and very down like her. I didn't see him coming, he was just there, and told me that it was my fault that I'd underperformed because I should have stayed in Switzerland. And because I was disrespectful to him, it was my fault that everything was ruined. And I was so, so, so upset. I don't think I've ever cried so much in my entire life. I just wanted to literally curl up in the corner and die. Seeing Vicky go through what she was going through, for me, she was in the wrong place. And being a cyclist wasn't for her. I said, if this is gonna hurt you that much to have to compete, you know, why are you doing it? You know, let's just call it a day, you know, let's just walk away from it. And I said I was gonna quit and that was it. I was gonna call it a day. I didn't wanna do it ever again because I didn't wanna be mediocre at it. I wanted to be really good at it. This is obviously emotion talking and you expected that. I've got to respect what she's saying, but I want to make sure that she's talking rationally. And that's why I asked her if I went with her to Beijing and, and supported her emotionally and uh, gave her these skills, could we go for Beijing? And there was a little glimmer of light then uh, where she sort of said to me, I would. One of the things I'll, I'll never know is how good I could have been. We had this conversation time and time again. Stick with it. At least you'll know. You won't be like me forevermore thinking, well, can I? Vicky was all about pleasing others, was never about pleasing herself, and I think that's where she probably got a little bit lost. You know, she probably wanted to please her dad, she wanted to please me. 
you know, I kept saying to her, you got to do this for you. It's not about anyone else, it's about you. And, and, you know, I think she struggled with that. But then again, if I hadn't have gone to Athens and failed, I don't think it would have given me the fuel to, to really take the step and make a change about myself and my life and my, you know, mental approach to be the best. The London Velodrome was the first Olympic facility to be officially opened. It was a significant moment, placing the cycling team at the heart of British hopes for gold medals. When I started, there wasn't any media attention at all in the team anyway, ever. I'm talked out. Probably got really bad red eye. Have I got really red eyes? Talking about the same stuff. How are you going to go at the Olympics? I know that it's going to be packed. Well, I'm going to do my best. Do you feel the pressure? Yes. Is that surprising? And you want to go out with a, on a high? Yeah, hopefully on a high. Being here is going to be on a high. Doing well here would be a super duper high. Super duper high. Quote of the day. In terms of dealing with all the external pressures, I know this is going to be the toughest challenge yet. Not realising that home games is going to be bigger, harder, would be very naive. The London World Cup brings Victoria face to face with her arch rival, the Australian Anna Mears. In the Beijing Olympics, Victoria crushed Mears to win gold, but in 2011, Mears exacted revenge, beating Victoria on her way to winning the World Championships and the coveted rainbow jersey. What can I say, results-wise, over the years, absolutely fantastic. She's been iconic in her field. Greatness could have been bestowed upon Anna, but Vicky was just too good. There's definitely no love lost there in that relationship. She races quite negatively in places, you know, pushes riders about and it's quite physical. And that's just not the way that I choose to do things. I'd see that as very tactically aware. Well, she said something to me along the lines of, I know we don't like each other very much. And I was like, who said that? Like, I've never said that. And I was like, well, that's clear that you, <laughs> you don't like me very much. This rivalry has intensified over the last few years, and Mears is now world champion in both the team and the individual sprint, titles that Victoria held going into Beijing four years ago. But I do believe I'm a better athlete than she is. Qualifying, Victoria's 200 metre time trial is cheered by the partisan crowd. But her time is superseded by the Australian. Both riders progress to the semi-finals, where they meet in a best of three ride. These races will be the fastest series of three in the history of female sprint cycling. Here comes for the challenge from Pendleton, but she can't do it. So race one goes to Anna Mears, the defending world champion, and Pendleton will have to think about that.
Edwards and won't get up to her. And Mears leads through 2-1. She tried her best. Her body wasn't physically able to do it at the end of the day. Victoria has not beaten Anna in the individual sprint for two years, but they will meet again in Melbourne in six weeks at the World Championships. One final battle before returning to the London Velodrome for the Olympics. In a bid to encourage more women to take up cycling as a leisure pursuit, Victoria has lent her support to Cycletta. Today, 800 women will ride the 25-mile course. I hope I've helped inspire a few of these ladies to get on their bikes today. <laughs> Sharing the love of cycling. Well, Vicky, lovely. I think it was a day well spent, to be honest. I might be a little bit tired tomorrow and I might have to adapt my training slightly tomorrow, but I think it's been a really positive event. Why are they lovely? Come here. Yes. Your inspiration, absolutely. Oh, thanks. Thank you. But it is nice that people do say, you know, oh, wow, we think you're amazing or, like, you're such an inspiration. It's really touching and quite unbelievable, actually. Um, and I find it, I think, more of a compliment from women. In the early days, there weren't many full-time women on the team. For a long time, it was just me and the boys. You know, I was in awe of them. So everyone always asks me, when do you think that you realised you had potential? And I say, when I became world champion in 2005, because that's how I honestly feel about it. Before that day, I didn't think it was possible. Victoria Pendleton is really flying here. The world title is waiting for her. Victoria Pendleton is the world sprint champion. I finally felt like I belong in that team. It was like a minimum entry requirement to the gang. Thank you, Dad. This one is for you. Lots of love, Victoria. And at the bottom it says, no, this is the original 2005 women's sprint. I'd love to have worn one. Because the only time you get to wear one is if you're entitled to wear one. That win in 2005 was the start of Victoria's total dominance of female track sprinting. During the three years leading up to the Beijing Olympics in 2008, Victoria would reign supreme. There's her dad, Max Pendleton. Happy moments in the Pendleton family. I was hitting new PBs, and I knew, going into the competition, that I have never been faster than this. That's why she's a world champion. It was a, an incredible place to be, and, and, and you hear athletes talking about that one moment where they hit that amazing form. Victoria Pendleton, the queen of the track here. I am in charge of the sprinters. I mean, it was like a triangle of coaching, and the three of them worked together to basically produce and manage all the training programmes for the elite sprinters. The three coaches were Ian Dyer, the organiser of the training programmes, Jan van Eyden, a master tactician, and Scott Gardner, widely considered to be track cycling's number one sports scientist.